Next, we're going to review the outside of the vehicle, starting up front uh, for uh, access to the uh, drive engine or the service uh, areas or fluid level check areas of the drive engine. And then to get uh, the hood open, got a couple of unlockable latches. And a support rod going into the receptacle. What we're going to see is the uh, first thing kind of obvious here would be the uh, coolant. Uh, and you'll note that uh, as we uh, take a look at the generator and do a compare that this coolant is a different color than uh, the generator, which we'll see a little later. This is Cummins Extended Life Coolant, so if any coolant will need to be added to the drive engine, you want to be sure to add uh, Cummins Extended Life Coolant. We have a dipstick here for checking oil level. Add engine oil, dipstick and fill for transmission fluid. Down here we have a Schrader valve. And this would be a, an emergency fill valve if you would have a need to uh, replenish the uh, uh, air pressure in the, in the air tanks. That would be the a location to, to fill the tanks. Next is one of two storage compartments. We're going to take a look at the latch on this compartment. First thing you're going to look for is how do you secure it or lock it. And there is a cover plate here which exposes the lock for one of the many keys that we talked about earlier on the uh, one of two sets of keys that come with the vehicle. Once it's unlocked, pressing in on the center release. Pulling out on the handle will give us access to that storage compartment. Also, we might want to note at this time the location of the second the fire extinguisher. Also, we while we're here in this to get the, to get the, to get it closed, it's a matter of dropping it down all the way with the handle out. Once it's up near the closed position pushing all the way into the handle until it retains the uh, access door. Over here we also see the uh, key operated uh, bus entrance exit door. This is a uh, sign holder, spring loaded retainers. This compartment has quite a few items in it. First thing you're going to see is no storage because of the electrical components that are in here. This is our uh, converter, charger, converter slice charger. It has an IQ smart charger connected to it to uh, properly maintain and uh, uh, extend the life of the uh, auxiliary batteries. We're also going to see a separate charger up here for, and a conditioner up there for our engine start batteries. The dual battery system we had talked about earlier in the video. It's a couple resettable breakers. I'm going to go ahead and trip them. They're labeled there, generator and power panel. I'm going to go ahead and trip one here by pressing the test button. Right now the generator would be inoperable. A little flag popped up there. The breaker is tripped. To restore that breaker to service, push down on the flag until it clicks. And of course, that's 12 volt power to our 12 volt power panel in the overhead above the windshield. This is our uh, BEP uh, battery isolator on a multiple uh, a vehicle with uh, multiple battery systems. An isolator is desired so that if one battery system would discharge, it would not take the other battery system down with it yet it'll allow a single charging source to charge uh, the battery systems and it's automatic does not require any operator intervention and the lower 
A similar device here is the emergency parallel to sense uh, when there is a need for uh, connecting the two battery systems or also uh, that can be accomplished by pressing the battery boost that we talked about earlier when we went over the dash of the vehicle. Cooling fan here or exhaust fan because we have batteries over here. Uh, this happens to be our auxiliary batteries or a power source for the 12 volt power panel. It is on a slide tray and it's going to require uh, maintenance or operator driver to uh, check the uh, battery water level. Backup camera, top center with a built-in microphone for our uh, uh, getting the uh, image up to the uh, uh, backup monitor on the back. This is the uh, location of the second storage compartment. And one of the things you may see in here is the shore cord. Right now the shore cord is connected. We'll get a little closer look at it after we get a little further around the vehicle. In addition to the shore cord, there is a, an adapter. It is a 50 amp shore cord. The end has a 50 amp uh, male plug on the end of it, which happens to be plugged in right now to this building power. And the uh, uh, conductors are hot leg one, hot leg two, neutral on a ground for 50 amp supply coming into the 120, 200 volt, 120, 240 volt AC power panel. If 50 amps isn't available, <coughs> these adapters are provided so that maybe 30 amps is available by installing the first adapter. It looks a little bit like a electric residential dryer plug, 30 amps. When you start to add the adapters, you start to limit, limit how many devices you can have turned on at the same time inside the vehicle. If 30 amps isn't available, we can add the last adapter and takes us down to 15 amps, plugging into a regular 15 amp uh, receptacle, but now you are severely limiting uh, what you're going to be able to operate uh, from the power panels with both adapters installed. There's another item here is called a six-foot stub, and this would enable us to uh, connect this to the end of the uh, shore cord. And if the proper receptacle is not available to plug the vehicle in, an electrician could connect this six-foot stub into a uh, power panel or power source to get power to the vehicle. Next compartment is our 10KW Cummins Zone and Commercial Quiet Diesel Generator. It's on a slide tray for service access. Pulling the two red pins here inboard will allow the generator to come out for servicing. As a driver operator, you need to check not only the fluid levels in the drive engine that we just looked at, but also to check the fluid levels in the generator. Do that by uh, using the oil dipstick here, a little hard to see there, an oil dipstick, and the coolant level. I mentioned earlier that the drive engine has a different coolant than what we have in the generator. You'll notice the green color here, a little more of an orange-red color <coughs> for the drive engine. <coughs> there is a sight glass or a sight gauge over on this end for observing the uh, level of the coolant with this cover still in place. Also, we're going to see on the generator controller a start-stop switch here, uh, and this would be normally for maintenance where they can actually start the vehicle, or start the generator from outside the vehicle. Has a main circuit breaker, a second hour meter, and a similar uh, description there of uh, uh, fault codes as they would flash if you have a problem on the uh, orange power light on the stop start switch. Some more specifications there, some part numbers, oil viscosity uh, recommended at different temp outside temperatures for your generator.
Our last compartment, or next to the last compartment, location of the engine start batteries, also on a slide tray. Uh, these happen to be maintenance free batteries. Uh, no access or no need to uh, check the uh, water level in the engine start batteries. Also this is the location of the engine start, also called the chassis batteries, the disconnect switch. Uh, we talked about the fact that if the vehicle is going to be out of use for an extended period of time, it's not plugged in, not connected to any outside power source, would be a good idea to <coughs> turn the batteries off. Fuse holder over there, main fuse. If uh, you lose the connection, electrical connection from uh, the uh, power panel and uh, uh, body electrical to the uh, chassis, uh, could be a, a blown fuse there. Windshield wiper symbol up there, telling you that that is our windshield washer reservoir for washer fluid. Uh, blue in color here, and if you look closely, it might be hard to see on the camera, it says DEF, uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Looks to be about 10 gallons capacity of the diesel exhaust fluid. We talked, uh, when we were going over the dash area, we talked about the uh, engine exhaust filter, which helps to clean up exhaust emissions. This is another additional uh, method of uh, uh, reducing the uh, exhaust emissions and what the diesel exhaust fluid does uh, acts as a catalyst and it will as the engine is running or as you're driving uh, it will automatically inject at the ratio of one gallon of diesel exhaust fluid to uh, 50 gallons of uh, diesel fuel consumed. So if you do the math, 10 gallons that you're given miles per gallon that you're getting on the engine, uh, I'll give you a feel for how often you're going to have to replenish the uh, diesel exhaust fluid supply. Our last compartment is uh, a fuses, fuse location, and a legend over here on what fuse uh, with the function of those fuses if you're doing some troubleshooting and you need to replace one of those to uh, fix a malfunction. Exterior receptacles, uh, numerous of these around the outside of the vehicle. They are a ground fault type receptacle to uh, uh, prevent a shock hazard. Uh, if uh, one is not working, it be a matter of pressing the test button or the reset button to restore that receptacle to power if it should trip. 